Hi Stitchy friends, it's Laura from Stitching by the Shore and I'm super excited to be trying out my very first floss tube extra video. So this one is going to be about how I do finishing and I use tape and I use mat board. So if you were interested, intrigued, wondering how all that works, uh, this is the place. I'm super excited to share it with you. If you are brand new, my channel is generally all about cross stitch and this is related because I'm going to show you how I do the very little finishing that I do and how I do it, influenced heavily by years and years and years of paper crafting. So what you see is things that I've learned along the way that work for me for paper crafting and I've just adapted them to this. And if you're a returner, you know I talked about wanting to do this video. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited to try. Nothing fancy here. You'll notice that we're in my studio. This is where I do all of my stamping and paper crafting. No stitching. It's <sighs> after years and years and years of collecting stuff. Um, there is no room for any of my stitching up here. So, and I work standing up. There are no chairs for comfort or anything like that. So I am actually standing at a six foot table that I used PVC piping to raise up so that I can stand and work. And then in order for you to see what I'm doing, when I move closer, <laughs> I actually just have piles and piles of cardstock with uh, different sets of them piled up so that you'll be able to see as best as I possibly can showing you what I do. So nothing, this is really high tech here. <laughs> We're going to give it a try and hopefully it all works. And then if it does, we'll be able to do some more of these. I'm living in a bit of chaos around either side. So hopefully I have everything that I need within reach. And if not, well, we'll just swing it because you know that's how I do my videos anyway. <laughs> so let's give this a try. All right, let's talk about supplies. And the one thing I wanna talk about with the way I'm doing this, I wouldn't call this a tutorial really because I'm not really an expert at it. It's just how I do it. Um, but when I look at tutorials or how-to videos, I always find that there's always an assumption that I should know some things. And maybe some of the supplies aren't given are explained, I should just know where they are or what they are, or there's a step that's skipped that I should just know how to do, and so on and so forth. So I always find I come away sometimes a little disappointed and confused <laughs> about how to do something because there were some things skipped. Kind of reminds me when your kid first gets to school, there's rules, not rules, but there's things that you should know about that happens in a school. And you don't because there's no manual and then as your kids are there a few years you get to know all the things it's kind of the same thing if i'm trying something new i don't necessarily know all of the things so i really really appreciate when people talk about things if they explain everything having said that for all of my stitchy friends who are paper crafters you're probably going to be rolling your eyes at me a little bit <laughs> be like i know that already hopefully you'll stick with me or even in comments tell me how it works for you because we can find a better way of doing this um, potentially if you have a brilliant idea I would love to share it with everybody so feel free paper crafters especially to leave comments and everybody if you have questions and I didn't answer something please let me know and I will answer it you know I answer every comment on all my videos it may take me a few days but I do sit down and I do go off uh, over all of them so let's talk about what we have and what we need first off obviously my stitching. So I have been stitching these monthly patterns from Country Cottage Needleworks and I have three here that I haven't finished finished. So I wanted to show them in pieces how they'll be finished. Then I have the mat board and I, I don't have the box to tell me what the width is, but I will look it up and I will tell you down below in the description box. One thing, I buy some of these things from Amazon and I don't know how to do an Amazon link without getting a paragraph of, of just stuff. Is there a way I can do that? I, I don't think I have enough followers to do a store, but do I need to? Is there a way to do it? And then I can just link everything and um, it would be a lot easier. But if not, I will explain everything. So I didn't know what to get for map board. So I went to Amazon and this is a set, it was a set of 10. So I still have several here. It's probably 11 by 14. So one way fits in my paper cutter. The other doesn't fit in my paper cutter. But that's okay. I make it work. And the most important part, obviously, was 
how wide, I guess. You could probably do narrow or wide however you want. I think I went by what other people had suggested, but I will link down below. I will give that information down below because I tried to measure it, but it's not enough. There's not that many uh, spots on the ruler, so I wasn't getting it right. So I have this, and let me just go over here real quick, coming right back to show you my paper cutter. So I have your standard tonic guillotine. I actually have several of these because I've been paper crafting since 1992. And in fact, there's where I do my finishing, there's one downstairs that the kids use. But it's your, just your standard, it's a 12 by 12. It has the little thing that you put it under and it's a guillotine. I love these. I've had these for, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 years and I still use them. And I have used them so much over the years for the business and for making cards that they're a workhorse for me. So that's what I still use. You have to put a little bit more effort into cutting because this is thicker than normal cardstock, but it does work if you give it a try. Okay, so we have mat board. Then let's talk tape. And I have three different sizes that I use for this. And I have been using what's called Miracle Tape. Let me show you the tag. And the company is Viva Las Vegas. They sell a lot of stamps. That's their biggest product line, but they came out several years ago with this tape and I really like it. And I use this one right here is an inch width. This one is a half an inch. And then this one is a quarter inch. I do also have the three eighth inch, which um, I sometimes use depending on what I need things for. But these three I'm gonna show today. There is also score tape that you can use and I don't have any in front of me. Same product, same idea. With these, you can either cut them, or if I find the thing here, I can just rip them. Generally, I cut them because I want an even cut, but that's just me. Um, just from years and years and years of using them, that's what I happen to do. When you speak of scissors, there are scissors that don't get cooked up from those tapes. And these are the Tim Holtz scissors. And they're great. They never get sticky. But downstairs, when I do these, I have a plain old kid's scissors that also has not gotten sticky. So you don't need to buy special stuff. If you have just these, if I'm up in the studio, I will use these. And then I do have up here, I have my scissors that is designated just for ribbon. And I also use it sometimes with fabric too. But again, if I'm downstairs and I don't feel like running up, I will just use these. So your scissors is pretty much what you have. You don't have to go and get crazy special stuff for that. I do use a little bit of Aileen's Tacky Glue sometimes. So that is something that I use. And then I do have my glue gun that I use a little tiny bit. <clears throat> I happen to use, yes, this is not the one you'll generally get at the craft store. It is the Stanley brand. Both my glue gun and until it finally... Uh, completely died on me. Uh, my heat gun were both Stanley that I got that are a little bit heavier duty. I do have in the studio one of these little teeny tiny guys and those are ones that you can get from the craft store. There's lots of different types. Um, I'm not sure I might have gotten this one from the hardware store to be honest with you. It uses the standard glue sticks that I do buy at the craft store. Last time I had a coupon I just went and I bought these from Michaels. Yeah, the Art Mines brand. So it works fine for me. I also have some felt, plain old felt that I got at Michaels. You know, it's a big strip. And um, I just cut it down to size. I do use, I went, I'm not a quilter, um, so I don't have all the little tools. I went to Michaels and I got the cutting board, the clear ruler and this in a set, used my coupon, got a nice little deal. And that's what I used when I cut all of my stuff, you know, the, the fabric, the um, stitch pieces, and then popsicle sticks. Sometimes if I am doing something with the glue, I can't tell you how many times I've burnt my fingers because I just don't remember and I keep doing it anyway. So I try to, you can buy these things in huge amounts. My kids used to, we would do craft, I do crafts with the kids. So we still have a ton of them at home. 
So that's what I use. But again, any craft store will have those types of things. And I think that's it. If there's anything else that pops up along the way, then I will show you. All right, so I did what I tried to do, and I mentioned this in my video, was say you're watching a cooking show. You know, they talk about things, then they have everything already prepped, and then they just throw it in and cook it. Then maybe if they throw it in the oven, they immediately have one ready and cooked to go so that they can show you. So that's what I tried to do here in some sort of fashion. It's not 100%. I was trying to figure out the order of doing everything, but it wasn't 100% perfect, but it'll do. Okay, so I have three of these to show you. I did iron both my fabrics and my pieces. It doesn't look like it now because I've been playing around with folding it over, but these were all ironed ahead of time. And I cut down my mat board. So this size is a five inch square because I knew that's what I wanted for covering these. And then behind for the fabric, I cut them into six inch squares. So that's already all set and cut. Now with these, because I like to glue them on, I actually do put the tape and everything on the front. So let me grab the scissors while I'm at it. I basically just roll my tape right on. I'm an eyeballer a lot because I've been doing this so long that I can usually eyeball. It doesn't come 100% to the side and that's okay. It's fine because I'll be folding it over. So let's get those two on there. Now the trickiest part is this first one and I found with the sticky board, I always was doing it backwards and I have trouble pulling off the, the stuff from the sticky board. I don't know, because I have nails. I would have thought that would work. What I do, and I learned this a long time ago when I would glue things with really sticky tape onto metal, there was no pulling it off. This I can pull off, but I learned that when I want to put something on that I'm not 100% sure about where the placement is, I just pull off a little bit of the tape and I just expose a little bit of the sticky stuff. So if it doesn't work, I'm able to pull it off. And I found with the sticky board, I can't tell you how many times I would pull it off and it just wasn't working for me. So that's why I said, you know what? I used to do this, let's try it. And it seemed to work for me. What I've done ahead of time was I've counted how many squares top and bottom that I wanted to have it as equal as possible. Nothing is perfect with what I do. Oh, I'm showing you the back. That's not, it doesn't look, doesn't look too bad, does it? Um, so I've counted that off and for the most part, it's even, but when I lay it down, one side or another might be a little bit extra. And then if you look here, I will set it up with a certain number on each side that way. And a lot of times, sometimes I'll eyeball, but that's the beauty of this. I can count my Ada squares as well. So for this, I had decided that it's about seven squares, six to seven squares, seven if you account for the fold over of the, of the mat board up. And that was about equal from side to side. So what I will end up doing is I will, let me try to show this sideways for you. First, I look on either side and I see how from side to side, if that's the equal number of squares, and then I would count up however number of squares it is. Let me look really close because I have the wrong glasses. Let's go one more. And the beauty again of this is I can line it up right along the line. And then what I would do is I slowly put it down. I do a little fold and then I flip it over. And I say, how does that look to me? And do I need to change it bottom or top? And then I finagle it. And because I've only ripped this tiny little bit off these things come off nice and easy and I'm not yanking at it, pulling at it, having problems. And each one is separate so I can get them pulled back uh, as soon as, whenever I need them. I don't have to do it any sooner than that. So I already have this one placed where I wanna place it. And if you'll see, it's only partially ripped off. So I'm gonna rip the rest of the backing off, put that there, and then I can push down. And then I take the bottom, I pull that backing off. It's already set where I want it to be. So I can just put it down and then I have it each side. Then what I do, 
that was the one inch that was the one inch tape. then because i don't leave myself a ton of borders and sometimes i mess myself up especially with the thicker ada i actually prefer leaving a little bit bigger border because when i do a a smaller border it gets a little bulkier i don't know the science behind it but that's what happens with me i now take the half inch and what i do is i put on the top and the bottom on the back so now i'm going to attach to the back so i'm going to pull the top one off first i don't think it really matters it's just the way i do it and then what i do is i pull and i'm pulling along the way the ada or the fabric whatever fabric I mean, it really doesn't matter right the fabric is the fabric and I pulled it and now it's glued on. It's a little bit, the tape is a little bit longer than what I have. It doesn't matter because it's going to be attached to the other backing anyway. And I do that for both sides. So I have two out of the four sides. Let me do that again. Pulled. And now my goal is to do these sides. But the sticky part has always been the corners for me. And I tried to do the whole, you know, the wrapping paper way where you kind of push it in a little bit and then you fold it over and it looks nice and neat which this one doesn't look too bad but then it's really bulky yeah the corner from the front looks fine but then i get a lot of bulk so what i did was i went back again to my paper crafting ways and this tape sticks but it, you have time to pull off if you needed to if you didn't like how you did it you can pull off easily where's my scissors i'm just going to use this one for now this crazy one. I went back to my paper crafting roots when I covered paper. I am not a good corner miter. I'm not really good at that. I know there's ways to do it and there are a lot of expert tutorials on it, but I have no idea how to do it. So I'm going to cut one of these and I'm going to show you what I did. There is no science to this. This is completely eyeballed. So if you want the science behind it, again, there's tutorials out there um, if you wanted to see. So let me cut it and then I'll show you what I did. Was I came in and I came in closer to this edge and then I kind of basically just cut it on just a curve so that it'll be equal. So that when I fold it over eventually, I'll just do this quick to show you, but um, I have a good corner. It's not super bulky and it can, comes out pretty tight as a corner. So I'll go around and I will, that's the first thing I do before I even do any more attaching, I will go around and I will cut all four of those. So let me do that. And I'll show you a little bit more on this and then I can show you one more finished stitched one, whoops. I didn't do that all the way. There's no editing. You're going to see the mistakes I make. And one more. Okay. So now all four corners have that little non-scientific cut. Okay. Now I go back to my half inch tape and I put another row down now. I'll just use the scissors. And again, it doesn't need to go edge to edge. It's fine because I'm attaching it that edge later to the fabric piece. So it's not a big deal. So I'll show you. So there's that. So there we go. There's the sides. And I can work again the beauty, each one of these separate, so I can work no problem with um, each side separately. Now, if I was a really good glue gunner, I wouldn't do this next part probably. I would just glue gun this. I really don't like the glue gun. Me and the glue gun do not get along. I can't tell you how many times I've burnt myself. So what I am doing is I'm cutting pieces that are about that big. Again, eyeballing it. I don't measure this kind of stuff. And let me show you. I'm putting them over that cut section. And then what I will do is I will pull the first one off. 
I stick my thumb right against the mat board on this hand because I'm doing it from this side. And then I use the other hand and I pull so that there's, now that corner is pulled in. See how it's pulled in? Let me do this other side. So take the tape off. The hardest part is the tape sometimes, especially with the fabric, likes to stick. So again, I stick my thumb, my thumbnail. I happen to have, you know, my nails aren't huge, but um, I have just enough nail. I stick it in and then I pull so that it gives me, again, the corner there. And I will do those two first before I'll do. And then what I do is I pull off that tape and I will now take these sides. And again, depending on how you like to do it, you can do each part and just keep pulling, pulling, pulling to make it as tight as you want. And there we go. So now it's in and here's my corners. Now I can finagle with my corners because it's the tape and say, oh, I don't really like that corner. It's a little bit off. If I haven't taped well enough, which this one, I think I actually, no, I'll do it on this side. See how sometimes, and I find with the fabric, this happens more. There's a little bit of a gap. So what I do, I'll take my glue gun and I stick just a little bit amount of glue. In fact, it's probably so hot. I don't even need to press much now. If I'm not thinking, I then go to press this down, burn my fingers. So this is where I'll take my popsicle stick and I just push it in. And then there you go. It's flatter. Is it perfect? No. But as we all like, the, the, the comment from Pam from Stitching in the Land of Good Enough is that it's good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. And I just blanked out. It's Pam, right? <laughs> I hope. I hope. I don't think she watches my videos. So don't tell her if I messed up her name. This side I think is fine. So I'm good to go. And you'll notice I did that on this side as well. So let me switch to February. And I'll do that last one. So I'll have to go back and finish all these. But so I have two sides already done. And then I have this side folded over. Let me do this last side. Let's use my thumb. We get right into the corner there. We pull off the tape from the back. Yeah, I really cut these a little bit thinner than I would have, not thinner, shorter than I would have. I think I would have generally liked a little bit more border. And also the other thing I found was I was squirting too much glue gun. And when the glue from the glue from the glue gun, when it, when it um, dries, it was getting really bulky too. And since I do use bulkier fabric, that can be a problem too. What do I do with my little stick? Here we go. Which one did I do? I don't even remember anymore. Let's see how they all are. So this is how the back looks. All done. Again, it's not gonna look perfect, but it is gonna go on the fabric. So I do the same exact thing with my fabrics. So let's look at my December piece. This is the fabric I chose with it. You know I do like to use coordinating as much as I can, but I use like to use a pattern that is, you know, this one's patterned, but you'll see it's very subtle. And I do like to do that um, with my pieces. Now the beauty with this is, here's the mat board, six by six. I have, my one inch tape but when especially when there is no pattern what do I do I put down my iron fabric I find basically what would be considered the middle I plop it down and then it's attached now the process is so much easier so I do not have to do the pull off part if I was using stripes or some sort of pattern that I had to be a bit more careful with I probably would have been more careful, but because I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. So that one will go with December when it's finished. And maybe I'll get these fully finished and I can show you in the video on Friday. Okay, so this one, where is October? This fabric is gonna go with the October piece. And so what I did already was I plopped it down and then I also, like before, I put the half inch tape on either side. 
And like before, then what I'll do is I will eyeball, you know, in fact, where's this other scissors? This one is where the other scissors does come in handy just because it cuts the fabric a little bit better than the ones that, but you do what's comfortable for you. <laughs> my kids know never, ever, ever take the pink scissors from my studio to cut paper. <laughs> Be careful though, because these things are sharp and I can't tell you how many times I'm holding a ribbon and I slice my finger before I slice the ribbon. So watch out for that. And again, like, see, I'm not really doing this perfectly. It doesn't matter. It's gonna be folded over. And then finally, you'll find when I'm, cra when I'm crafting or working, I usually create a pile of trash and then I pick it all up at the end. So again, now this side has the four corners. And then what I will do is I would take this quarter inch tape. And like before, let me show you. I will put the tape closed down on those corners and then I'll be able to fold it over and make the corner. Did I do that on this one? I did it on two of the four, so let's move on. Okay, the pink. The pink will go with February. That will be what the final one is with that. So what I've done already was I did that on the corners, and then I've got one more side to do. So I pulled the tape on this one already. So let me pull it on this side. And this is where I find the hardest time for me to take tape off is when it's on fabric. For whatever reason, and let's see if I can do this because I want to show you a finished piece. I should have had this one already slightly pulled off, so it would be, let's see. Oh, I think it's giving me an opening. Yep. Okay. So we pull it off. I use my thumb. I come on in, and I do that with the corner. So then what I need to do is just pull off this, see again on the fabric, nails are not helping me 100%. And of course, you know, I'm trying to do this quickly, whereas I would probably do it a lot slower and it wouldn't be an issue. So I just pull that off. I have the exposed tape. So again, I will pull this over and I will pull the fabric up. And then I'll look at it, see how my corners look. My corners look pretty good. I'm just going to unplug the glue gun because I don't think I need that. And I don't want it to keep going. Okay. Knowing me, I'll burn myself even if I'm not using it. Okay, so it's messy at the moment, but you'll see. Here's the back. All the corners are done. And here's February. Back. All the corners are done. So now all I have left to do. Oh, I do need the glue gun because I do use the gun for this. Let me re-tape, re-plug it in. Okay. If I was doing this normally, and say I was just gonna put it up against something, I would probably do the sides all even, and top, bottom, side to side would be even. I didn't do a good job ironing this. That's all right. When you look at it from a distance, you won't be able to tell. But because I'm putting that on the board with the clip, I need a little bit more space on the top than I do on the bottom. So I'll hold it sideways just to show you. So here's where the clip is gonna go. And so this way, it's a little bit more even around these, not 100% between this and these, but these two are even. So what I'll do, this is where I do use the glue gun. And uh, I am not a glue gun expert, as you will see. So I basically take the glue gun. This is where you could probably use Aliens as well. Um, in fact, you, I definitely know you could use it. Oh, my glue stick. I always have an extra glue stick sticking out the back because the glue I use so much that it needs to, and then I have to keep pushing it down a little bit. So there's my glue. Careful not to touch the glue. Careful not to do it upside down. So I'll put it down on there. I eyeball. Again, I don't measure anything. I just eyeball. I push down. The glue holds pretty quick. Aileen's probably would just have to wait a little bit longer big deal and there we go so that is let me show you that is february fully 
done, except for the back. The back's still a mess. Now, now let me unplug. And I have glue gun this last part, but I also like doing aliens for this. So I take my fabric, uh, my felt, and I cut this five by five because I wanted to make sure it's gonna cover the entire back. And I see a couple, oh, there we go. All the extra scraps, no one's gonna see because it's glued. So I could use the glue gun on here, but I actually prefer to use the Aileen's on this. And I just put it around. I don't know, and I will confess, I do not know how the tape would work with the felt. If I was really going to feel like I needed to use tape, then I might pull out my red line tape. That sticks to everything. Oh, I probably overdid the Aileen's, but that's all right. I always seem to overdo. So then again, I just eyeball where to work in the back. Because I didn't put the glue all the way to the edge, I can kind of slide things along. I very rarely use glue, obviously, in paper crafting because glue and paper are not big fans of each other. There are certain glues, something like this, that I will use sometimes with paper, and I'll just use small bits of it, and it seems to be okay. So, it's not fully dry, but there you go. I got a little smudge of glue on it, but that's the back, so really, who cares? So this will be the final piece, and my mom will be able to switch these out for each month. And that's how it was done with mat board and tape. If you have any questions at all, please, 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 I gotta stand back so I can see you again, or I'll just stand down like this. <laughs> if you have any questions at all, please, please, please let me know, and I would be happy to answer them. Uh, if I was confusing in something, maybe I assumed when I shouldn't have assumed, then let me know because I would be happy to fix whatever um, and let you know or just talk you through it if you needed, if you were interested in doing it and you needed some help with that. I'd be happy to do that. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I guess that's about it. Please be kind. It's the first time I've tried anything like this. I hope it was helpful and I hope that... Now that I've done this the first time, when it comes to doing the scrapbooking my stitched pieces, then this will get a little bit easier and I will be able to do it. So I guess that's it. As you know, until next time, my friends, happy stitching.